day is a good day to give God praise. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this day, God, for this morning, God. Thank you, God, for early rising, God, how you have kept us this week. Now, God, we ask that you be with us this day. Anoint what has to happen this morning, God. We celebrate what has to happen this morning, God. We thank you, God, that you're still in the calling business, God. We thank you. So, God, we ask you to anoint the preacher, God. Anoint the singing, the songs, God. Anoint everything that has to happen in this hour. That be, may be to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to have the wisdom of the word and the prayer. Good morning, saints. Good morning. Our wisdom from the word this morning will be coming from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. And it reads as thus. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers mm -hmm. for the perfecting of the saints, mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to a measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And thus I bring Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. May it be a blessing upon us in the hearing. May we pray, please. Father, I stretch my hand to thee, O oh Lord. No other help that I know, O oh Father. Yes. Father, I stand before you this morning and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day that you have set upon each and every one of us, O oh Father. Yes. Father, there is someone didn't wait this morning, Lord. Amen. I'm asking you, Lord, to bless their families. Bless the families that are sick and shut in, Lord. Bless those who are in convalescent home, Lord. Bless the elderly. Bless those who are ministering, Lord. Father, bless the speaker of the hour this morning, Lord. Yes. Speak through yes. them, O oh Lord. Give them Amen. a word that we can use this morning, O oh yes. Father. Because, Father, this is one of your children, Lord, that's reaching out to do your will, O oh Father. And, Father, continue blessing this church, Lord. Bless our pastor and his family, James E. Cook, O oh Lord. So, Father, let us open our eyes and let us open our ears today, Lord. Let us be doers of this word that you will bring upon us, O oh Lord. So, Father, just bless us. These things I ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, come on, let's give God some praise this morning because yes, he is yes, so good. Yes. Oh, come on, just stand up on your feet and just give God some praise this morning. If he's been good to you. Hallelujah. We thank and praise the mighty God this morning. Yeah, God. Yeah, God. He is so worthy to be praised. So worthy. Get your house in order. Oh, do it today. Do it today. 
you all to put your hands yes, together. We're sitting yes, out there yes. like we just sit. Let's put our hands together <laughs> yes, and have church. Yes, yes, yes. I said, can't nobody do it like Jesus. can nobody, can't nobody do, it like the Lord. do it like the Lord. I said, can't nobody, can't nobody do it like Jesus. Do it like Jesus. He Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Oh, pick me up and he turn me around. He pick me up. Pick me up and he turn me around. Turn me around. Oh, he pick me up. Pick me up oh, and he turn. Like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He is my friend. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said, can't nobody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He 
can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody love me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like Jesus. I said nobody. Nobody. I said nobody. Nobody. I said nobody. Nobody. I said nobody. Nobody. I can't pick me up. Nobody. I can't turn me around. Nobody. I can't place my feet. Nobody. On solid ground. Nobody. I said I can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I say, can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Oh, heal my body. Told me to run on. He healed my, heal my body. And he told me to run on. Told me to run on. Oh, he healed my, heal my body. And he told me to run on. Told me to run on. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody hold me like Jesus. Can't nobody hold me like Jesus. I said nobody. Nobody. I said nobody. Nobody. I said nobody. Nobody. I can't pick me up. Nobody. I can turn me around. Nobody. I can place my feet. Nobody. On solid ground. Nobody. I said I can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. Do me like the Lord. I said can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Do me like Jesus. He's my friend. He's my only friend. He's my friend. He's my only friend. He's my friend. He's my friend. He's my friend. He's my friend. Yes. Amen. Amen. Good morning. What a beautiful day it is today. I tell you that the Lord has blessed us to witness uh, the transition of of um, daughter of this church, and um, more importantly, uh, God's uh, child. And we're so grateful to to witness this uh, transition in her life. Let me say this. Um, you only have one opportunity to share your initial thing. And what's, what's so important is that uh, those of you uh, who are here will be a part of uh, making this sacred occasion a memorable one. And the way you do that is this. One is continue to pray because I believe you've already been praying. Two, which I think is more in important, and that is to forget you knew this young lady when she was five, 15, 20, whatever, and really sit. Seek to hear from God. And I think if you do those two things, continue to pray. And really seek to hear from our Lord. That this too will be a 
memorable in Jesus for all of us. Amen. Now we're going to ask the singers to sing in about two more minutes of praise and worship. I won't introduce her, but we do want her mother and her father and to stand, Brother Ronald and Jackson, and Sister Priscilla, amen, and her, her brother, Brother Chris, and we'll see you today, and we'll see Uncle Donald, amen. And she has a lot of family there, I wouldn't dare to introduce all of them, but we thank God for them, and pray with and for them also, and people can be very nice in this time life of the church and some of you all on this side I know you're holding your seat I know I know but you had you had been preaching as long as I have it wouldn't bother me that much but let's come on down with you as the choir prepares to bless us and Miss Jackson uh, Sister Jackson is a native of Kernersville let me say this by way of introduction. I am always blessed when people struggle with and wrestle with that tugging that's on their heart. And she has been wrestling with this for a while, and I've known nearly a year now. And it's been almost a year since she finally accepted the call. I am suspect of people who rush to the pulpit declaring that God has called them. That ought to be a struggle. And when God calls anyone, it is a call to preparation. And she has demonstrated by her struggling, by her commitment to theological training. She is in her completing her second year at Virginia Union University, standing with DeWitt Proctor School of Theology, the best school theological for theological training on this side of the no pun intended to wait for us to become preachers. But but Virginia Union is the school. Amen. Y'all say amen. Y'all pastors, amen. So she is uh, she's training, and so she's preparing herself, and we're excited about it. Amen. Sing us.
yes, he will. Jesus will. Come on, everybody, sing it with us. When I'm in trouble. When I'm in trouble. He gives, he gives me a song. Me a and in the night season. In the night season. And oh, when the, the day long. Oh, when who makes me to right? Who makes me to right? When Everybody say, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus will. Jesus will. I know he will because he Come said on, he will. Oh, yeah. Jesus will. Jesus will. I know he will. I know he will. He said he will. He, he said he will. He'll fight my back. He'll fight my back. If I can stay. If I can stay. If I can stay. Mother and my father, for simply being who you are, I thank you. To my spiritual father, the pastor of this church, I thank you for all your wisdom. And for my, my family, for my friends who have traveled near and far, for your friendship, for your sisterhood, for your brotherhood, for all that you have done in my life especially my family, my auntie, my cousins, all of my cousins. I love you and I thank you for, for simply being who you are. I would not be here had not been for God and for you. I, I just, I thank you. Amen. <laughs> and let us pray. Most gracious God, I ask that you, that you continue to manifest your spirit in this place. Hide me in the shadow of your majesty, O God. Let it be none of me in all of your glory. This humble prayer, I pray in your precious and gifted name. Amen. My 
the text for today is coming from Mark 14, verses 32 through 36. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. They went to a place called Gethsemane. He said to them, to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible that the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet, not what I want, but what you want. Upon reading this text several times, you may be seated. I'm sorry. You may be seated. <laughs> Upon reading this text several times, thoughts and emotions enthralled my, my mind and my heart. Questions about this man, Jesus. The author in the, in the book of Mark, he, he, he paints an intimate portrait of Jesus before he's betrayed by Judas and, and put on trial by the chief uh, priest and, and by the, the scribes and the Pharisees. We, we see the, in, the inward turmoil and we see the, the, the total dependency on God and we see his faithful obedience to the call upon his life. I wondered, to whom was Mark speaking? Through my exegesis, my Bible study, I, I, I've learned that it is believed that this, this book was written to, a, to a, 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 a people who were going through extreme persecution, who were struggling under the reign of the Roman Emperor Nero between the years 65 and 75 CE. Um, this text was a message of inspiration and hope. And isn't it a great thing that this message is, a, is still a message of inspiration and hope today? This soliloquy of Jesus conveys to us the vulnerability and the endurance, the, the weakness and, and the courage that we all experience as human beings. He, we, we often fixate on the deity of the Christ, but we rarely examine the humanity of Jesus. That there are times when we encounter hardships and betrayals and, and, and heartbreaks and, and when our fears and our, and our insecurities and our expectations leave us stagnated, unable to move. But uh, when those times occur, when those situations arise, we must do as Jesus did, and, and, and we must articulate our anguish to ensure our assurance. Amen. Um, so moving further, we, we see, as we move through the text, we see Jesus uh, is aware of the torment that awaits him, terrified and brokenhearted, fraught and exhausted, he, this man of flesh and blood, this man of joys and sorrows, this man with red blood flowing through his veins goes to this sacred sanctuary of gnarled olive trees in the darkness of night to, to plead his, his case to the only eternal judge. We, we meet Jesus on the way to the garden. The, the multitudes have dwindled away and, and no longer do we hear, Hosanna, Hosanna. No, no, no longer do we see the palm leaves tossed at his feet. The party is over. Uh, the party is over. Eight out of the 11 remaining disciples have been relieved of their duties and, and, and now leaving only Peter, James, and John uh, to be with Jesus, uh, we find that uh, Jesus wants them to keep watch and, and, to, and to be with him because 
Because sometimes you need your homies to ride with you. Sometimes you need your, your friends to have your back. Amen. And, 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 and it's a great thing that, that we see this. But as we go further, we see that in the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane actually meaning in the Hebrew, oil press. We arrive at the pressing of Jesus. Okay, in, in verse 34a, he says, I am deeply grieved even to death. We've never seen this side of Jesus. Uh, he goes a little further in verse 35, actually falling to the ground, unable to stand due to the immense, immense emotions that he is feeling. Can we not identify with his pain? Is there anyone that can identify with his struggle? Um, so, so for the young woman, the young mother whose body is filled with cancer, she knows his pain. For, for the father who has to bury his only child, he knows his grief. And for me, leaving all that was familiar for unknown places and unknown spaces, I know his loneliness. I know his fears. I know his doubts. But the, the beauty of this story, the beauty of Jesus is that he, he doesn't stay in that place. He doesn't stay in his anguish. What he does is he, 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 he takes action against this agitation to ensure his, his, his remedy and his rescue. He, he finds that, that, that there's comfort in speaking with Jesus, with God, rather, excuse me. So we move, we move a little further, and we see that, 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 that he does take with him John and, and Peter and James, because sometimes it's, it's good to have your people, right? But then there are times when the, the, the late-night phone conversations with your BFF don't cut it, right? Um, the group me conversations don't fix it. And, and, and the, the group me uh, dialogue is just, it's, it's, it's lackluster. But there's a beauty in, in seeing this conversation between, between Jesus and God. Um, sometimes the, 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 the IMing and the DMing and the, the texting don't bring peace to your predicament. Amen. But, but the thing of it is, is that um, just a little talk with the eternal can make things all right. Amen. Amen. So then we see, we see Jesus saying, Abba, Father. He, Abba shows that he knows who he's talking to. He knows God. He's not a stranger to him. And it's a great thing that because of this man, Jesus, we have that same closeness, that same intimate relationship is available to us. Amen. And in the final verse of this text, there, there, there is a great significance in the words of Jesus. We find, find that in, in verse 36, being motivated by faith, he cries out to God um, for rescue, but receives uh, some strengthening, some, some, some endurance, to, to even, even endurance to, to endure the cross. Hmm. My God, if you walk with me a little further, there, there, there's, there's, a, there's a, a significance in the punctuation of this text. Uh, and, I, and, and I find the punctuation that is the semicolon. See, the semicolon does a great thing. It, it tethers together two likely likely clauses that are closely related. So, so, so we see the semicolon tethering together the, 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 
the ability of God, the omnipotent presence and reality of God with the limitations and the insecurities of our humanity. When he says, remove this cup, this, 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 is, this is him saying, I, I don't want to go through this by myself. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to. But that semicolon shows up right again when he says, yet, not what I want, but what you want. Yet, not what I want. I, I, I want to stay comfortable, but I can't because you don't want it. You want me to, to walk out this thing. You want me to, to be a light to the world. You want me to save the souls to come. You want me to save me and, and you. And it's a beautiful thing that, that we have that, that, that strength that comes from God. And we go further, and we see that, that Jesus is, is filled with this, this, this strength, and, and he's obedient even to death on the cross. I leave you with this. Though tumultuous times will occur, we will face agonies of this current society, Agonies of racism and, and sexism and, and classism and poverty. Agonies of, of inadequate resources and inadequate uh, funding for our public schools for our black and brown and poor children. We will face uh, injustice in this world. But it's a great thing to know that when we are faced with these agonies, we can can cry out to God to, to strengthen us and cry out to God to give us our power, cry out to God to lift us up in those midnight seasons. So I tell you, beloved, my family, cry out to God for your insurance. Cry out to God for your coming. For, cry out to God for your power. Cry out to God to stand the next day, to stand the next moment. Cry out to God because you can. You can. You can do it. Help me, Holy Ghost. You can do it. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to, to be scared. To feel awkward, it's okay. It's okay. It's human. But don't stay there. Pick up your cross. Carry it. Walk it out. You can do it. I've done it. I'm here and I'm proud and I'm standing here because of God Almighty. He has empowered me because God has strengthened me. You can do it. And it is a blessed assurance. It is a blessed, blessed assurance that we, can, that we can say. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with its goodness and lost in its love. It's a blessed assurance. It's a blessed assurance, beloved. Walk in your power. Walk in your relationship. Walk in the love that God created you with. He didn't create you to be, to be fearful. He didn't create you to be doubtful. He didn't create you to be stagnant. He created you with a purpose, a greatness, and it exists in you. And just like Jesus, just like Jesus, he picked up his cross. He carried it. Though it was heavy, though it was, though it was burdensome, he took that cross. He took those lashes. He took those whips. And it was, 
He felt it. He felt it. So when you feel the lashes of life, when you feel the, 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 the beating of life, it's okay. Speak, speak your anguish. Speak your, your, your discomfort and your agitation. God is listening. God can hear you. Amen. Be blessed. Again, we're thankful. Again, we want to thank God for this inspirational uh, message from, uh, at this time, Minister uh, Kareem Jackson has blessed our hearts on today. Amen. Amen. And I, I tell you something. Um, God is up to something. At St. Stephen. Amen. He keeps on reminding us every day uh, that he's taking us to new heights, uh, higher and higher. And this is just uh, one aspect of a great weekend we have um, enjoyed and has yet to end. We still have more to come. I said to the uh, secretary about couple months ago, maybe longer, uh, that today for me symbolizing, symbolizes rather um, new beginning for us, the dawn of a new era. And so we're excited uh, about it. Uh, we ordained some preachers on yesterday, uh, Minister Atkins and Minister Suber and Minister Preston. And so we're excited. And now this morning we heard the initial sermon of, uh, of let me say this, uh, of, of your very own. Amen. 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 <laughs> and we're excited. Amen. I mean, I mean, it's not often that you have the opportunity to hear the initial sermon of someone who's a product of the church from birth. <laughs> and so we thank God for that. Now, this is what I want us to do. Um, this young lady's in school and uh, doing a phenomenal job. And uh, it is customary, at least in churches that I've pastored, uh, that we bless her with a love offering because we want to sow into her ministry. Uh, and uh, don't take your tithe, but you got